What we're going to do here is we're going to unbox the First Light AR 102 EQ3 telescope and we'll put it together and go over all the important points. The box just kind of unfolds here. see all this stuff here and we flip it around here the instruction manual is great because what we do is uh, we um, just give uh, simple drawings of how all the pieces fit together so uh, it's very international in that way so we're just going to lay that over here we're going to pull out the individual components I'm guessing this is the tripod. That's right. So we got an accessory tray. We got diagonal and it looks like a red dot finder eyepiece right here. We got slow motion controls for the mount. And the tripod itself. We're going to pull that out. Lay this aside right down here. What I'm going to do is we're just going to pull out the mount head, counterweight rod, and this one feels heavy, so this one's going to be the counterweight. The counterweight's double boxed so it doesn't shuffle around in there, that's an empty box. Here's the actual counterweight itself. Be careful you don't drop that on your foot. <laughs> and then we're going to open up the tube assembly. I know, you're supposed to use a knife. I always use my keys or my thumbnail. It's just the way I am. anxious anytime I'm working on a telescope. I love, I just love telescopes. As you couldn't tell, huh? Okay, and there's the tube assembly. So, what we do is we could start from the bottom up. We're going to start with the tripod. Now the tripod already has the leg extension lock knobs already installed, so you could extend the legs for your uh, floor assembly, but I'm just going to assemble it here on the table to begin. And I'm going to tape the wrapping around the equatorial head. The equatorial head allows you to align the telescope to the celestial pole, and by turning one knob, you can adjust, you can constantly turn it uh, very slowly to keep up with the rotation speed in the sky. And that way you can follow objects as they track from east to west. I'm going to take the wrapping off the counterweight. Counterweight rod, so much control. Two accessory tray. One. I love this accessory tray. It it, it comes. Uh, you know, most accessory trays have holes for the uh, eye pieces, but this one's really cool because it also adds rigidity to the tripod. And when you um, assemble this. What you'll notice is that it's kind of keyed here. So what we'll do is we'll match the, uh, the key and then you turn it and it snaps into place. And these three snapped positions add rigidity to the tripod, which is great. We're gonna unscrew the uh, mount head here. And then what we're going to do, this already has a captured knob. There's a captured knob up underneath the tripod here. And 
And what we'll do is we screw that in until it's nice and tight. Then what we're going to do, you see, turn the, you turn the mount down like this, put it in a, uh, just at an angle like this, and turn the knob. This is a latitude adjustment knob that I'm screwing in there. Now you can see it can raise, raise or lower the mount head. And then I release that lock there, and I can turn the mount head like so. And we can install the counterweight. Counterweight rod has a safety stop on one end, has a threaded end on the other end. What we're going to do is release the, the knob here. This knob is actually pushing on a little piston that goes into the counterweight rod. And you just put it up, up there like so, hold it in place, and then just turn this by hand until it's all the way threaded into the declination axes here and then what you can do is you can tighten that counterweight rod just kind of put it in the middle there for now and then it's time to put on the tube assembly so i'm going to set this aside i'm going to take the tube assembly out now the other thing i'll do last point is uh you know i'll put on the accessories including the so much control knobs but you could put them on now if you'd like the tube assembly has got two cradle rings, and these cradle rings have two knobs. See how the cradles just kind of come apart like that. If this is your first telescope, this is all new to you. If you put together telescopes before, you've had other telescopes, this is pretty conventional um, uh, hardware and will come in second nature to you when you do this kind of assembly. But here it is. This is a 4 inch, 102 millimeter hundred and two millimeter uh, aperture uh, doublet achromat refractor. And um, a thousand millimeter focal length, it is uh, it's a very nice instrument. This is going to produce amazing views of planets and um, the moon. And you're going to see, you can see the broad range of deep sky objects too. So you're going to be able to see the Messier catalog, a lot of the bright NGC objects that are up there. Um, so this is really going to get you started for an adventure in, in astronomy. We're going to get rid of all of our paper here. And now it's time to mount the telescopes. So we're going to put the tube assembly over here. We're going to take our trusty equatorial mount. I'm releasing this knob here. This knob allows me to put this assembly, uh, which is uh, a V-block assembly. Uh, it's also called the saddle, saddle plate. This is uh, a standard type of V-block that you'll see out there. And you can just slide it in down to about the mid position here. I'll turn this around a little bit so you can see I'm about mid position. And we make this adjustable so you can slide it back and forth if you need to to balance the telescope tube assembly. But the telescope tube assembly can also be balanced uh, by sliding it back and forth within the cradle rings. Then I'm going to take the tube assembly itself and I'm just going to hold it kind of at the center of gravity. After I put on the diagonal and the finder scope and everything, it'll actually be a little bit more tail heavy. And I just lay it in the cradle rings like so. And I pull the cradle rings over and we tighten them. Make sure you find the hole. There we go. And here we go. I don't do a lot of editing on these things because I want you to see how even someone as experienced as I am kind of goes through the process of, uh, of doing such an assembly. Anyhow, it is now mostly assembled.
we can put on the slow motion controls. And the slow motion controls, one of them fits on an axis that's called right ascension. And it's called right ascension because, you know, when you look at things uh, in the sky, as they move across the sky, they rise in the east and they ascend to the right. So that's right ascension. That's this movement here. This is the tracking movement. Declination is this movement, back and forth here. So by moving in right ascension and declination in the sky, you can get to any point in the sky that you want to. Um, but it's called declination because if you look at the coordinates in the sky, there is a celestial pole. Uh, Polaris is very near the celestial pole. It's not exactly on the pole itself. The true pole coordinate is 90 degrees north in the northern hemisphere, 90 degrees south in the southern hemisphere. But you'll see if you move it in any position, you are declining away from the pole. So we go away from 90 degrees, now we're 80, 70, 60, 50, you know, and so on. And, and then you get down all the way down to zero declination. Now you're going into negative uh, declination numbers. And if you live in the you know, southern hemisphere, you'll be using neg negative declination coordinates uh, more than you will northern hemisphere coordinates and vice versa. If you're up here in the United States or northern hemisphere in Europe, you will see uh, uh, most of your celestial objects will be in the northern uh, declination areas of the sky. The other slow motion control we put here, having slow motion controls is really cool because now with flexible slow motion controls, you won't vibrate the telescope. Imagine you're looking through the telescope at 100 magnification Anything that you do is also magnified 100 times. So, so much controls with flexible cables makes that much nicer. Last part here, we're going to put on the other accessories. The red dot finder is really cool because it is zero power. This is the red dot finder itself. You will look through this way. And when you turn it on, a beam of light, a red light comes here and actually hits this window. And you will adjust that, that uh, position. It'll look like a dot to you. And you'll adjust it side to side like this and up and down like this so that when we're looking through this instrument, we do a, an initial calibration to align the red dot over the same object that we're seeing in the sky. After that, you can just look through, this, through this, uh, the, this finder and aim the telescope in any direction. Wherever the red dot goes, that's what's going to be in the eyepiece. Putting on the red dot finder is really easy. You can see there's a channel here, there's a set screw here, and what we do is we just slide it in and it's ready to go. Now I failed to mention that uh, there's a, another accessory here, which is really cool. It is a camera adapter for your smartphone, and this lets you take pictures of the moon and stuff. So that's that's a very nice accessory because we want you to get into astrophotography. And with this setup, you can photograph the moon, um, and the moon's images of the craters and stuff are really a sight to behold. Okay. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put in the diagonal. Now what's a diagonal? This is the diagonal right here. The diagonal has a set screw, it has a chrome insert, and what we're going to do is we're going to slide it in. So we have a little set screw here, and you have another set screw on the other side. We're just going to release the set screws enough to slide it in, and then we're going to tighten it down. We are almost done. The last part of this is to put in the eyepiece, and we give you a nice 25 millimeter colossal eyepiece. Now, there's other eyepieces that you're going to want to buy um, to give higher and lower magnification, but this one's going to be an all-purpose eyepiece that you can use to find anything in the sky. And you will be able to see, even with this eyepiece, Saturn's rings. Of course, with this eyepiece, because of how bright this eyepiece is, you're going to be able to see faint deep sky objects like uh, galaxies, nebula, 
uh, comets, that kind of thing. So, um, anyhow, the whole telescope is now assembled and uh, ready to go. There is another accessory here um, that can be used uh, for a camera adapter, uh, a conventional type of camera adapter, but uh, uh, we'll be using a smartphone, which is what most of you will have when you're starting out. And smartphone, uh, smartphone photography of things on the ground and the moon is a lot of fun to do. So we're out doing some public astronomy tonight, and uh, one of the things I have to do with my telescope is I have to align the red dot pointer to the main instrument. And what I've got it aimed at right now is the, is the full moon. So uh, what I'll do is get down with the scope, look straight through the finder like this, and then what you're going to do is make sure that you have lined up and you adjust for up and down there's a little screw right down here and for side to side there's a screw on this side and I just do a little bit of adjustment and now wherever I release the locks and point the telescope I just look through the red dot and I can see where the scope is aimed through the eyepiece so I'm shooting video of the moon right now to the side piece. Wait, what's going on And you can see the moon's moving slowly out of the field of view because uh, the telescope doesn't have a drive on it. But uh, you get a nice long view with it and it works out pretty nice. <laughs> 